Howdy, if you're out, it's Miss Kosh. Uh, today, I want to work through um, these FRQ, this FRQ practice set that I put together. Um, so I modeled it off of things I'd seen from Mr. Passwater and from what I saw when I went to my AP Summer Institute. Um, so is this perfect? No, but um, I, I borrowed a little bit. I borrowed ideas for sure. But then I also, this graph actually came from Mr. Passwater stuff and and I opted to just keep it because it made my life a little easier. So I'm gonna try and um, use the answer documents as you would use them on the test. Um, I'm gonna see how far I get into one, um, in one video. I might have multiple videos. Um, keep in mind that practice set, or excuse me, FRQ1 and FRQ2 are gonna be with the calculator and three and four are not. Um, and so these are problems that I wrote um, modeling as closely as I could off of what I think the FRQ will look like. Um, I'm starting with the Casio calculator with the memory cleared. Um, so let's just jump in. Oh, and I think um, I've put all this together in one PDF and I'll try and put a link to that just to whoever wants um, this blank link. Um, it might not be a bad idea to jump in right now, start, see what you can do, and then come back and watch me when you finish, when you finish, so uh, we can, so you know whether you know what you're doing or not. Okay, so um, here is this first prompt. I'm going to try if I can, um, the goal is to help you see the prompt, the writing document, and the calculator all at the same time, but uh, life is not perfect, so here we go. <laughs> um, beginning, okay, they give us the graph, this is the function f, and they tell us g, Let's try that again. They've given us F, um, they've given us an equation for G, and they're telling us H is um, the composition of G and F. So this kind of notation, um, G of F of X is, is this right here, G of F of X. Um, and so they want us to find the value of H of three as a decimal approximation or indicate that it is not defined. So on my answer document, the very first thing part, this is one, I, A, one A, I, oh my goodness, okay, so that's here. So what were they asking? They're asking for H of three, which is going to be H, we said was um, G of F of three, so we want G of F of three. Okay, so looking at that, F is this graph up here. So at F of three, that's when the X value is equal to three, I have a Y value of one. So this would be equal to G of one, and now my G equation is this big old nasty thing. So I can either just plug one in, which um, when I plug in one to my equation, one to any power is still just one. So this is, that was convenient for us. Um, but it becomes, so it's 1.25 plus, um, you can't, I can't see it, much less you can't see it. Okay, can you see it there? Um, plus, 2.125 minus 2.8 minus 4.8. Okay, and it, so I'm, I'm getting the answer that H of three is equal to a negative 4.225. My calculator can change that into a decimal if I wanted to. Um, so negative 169 over 40. I think that um, this is probably the best answer for us on that one. Um, just in case this wasn't so easy to work with, and we probably need that equation in the calculator anyway, I'm gonna type this in, and this is 1.25x to the fourth, yeah, I think you can see what I'm doing, plus 2.125 times x to the third, minus 2.8x squared, minus 4.8x, Okay, um, I'm gonna graph this. I might need to change the window. Oh, that doesn't actually look too bad. Um, and I can, oh, so what I wanted to do a minute ago was figure out what G of one was equal to. So I can do G solve on the Casio and come over here Y cal and ask when X is equal to one, what is Y equal to? And so this number matches that number that I had just found. Um, the advantage, uh, well, the reason I typed it in right now is so that you could see if it hadn't been something as easy as a positive one, um, then the calculator could have found it for me, and uh, that would have been easy. Okay, find the value, which we did. 
Okay, find all values of x for which f of x equals 2. f of x, remember, is this graph right here. Or indicate that there are no such values. So we want to know, I think it's right here for us. We want to know when is this graph, when is its y value equal to 2? Okay, so this would be y equals 2. So it happened at, um, we could say f of 1 equals 2. We could say f of 4 equals 2. And that to me looks like 8. f of 8 equals 2. Um, probably the better way to say this, to answer this question, let's see, how did they ask it? Find all values for x in which that, or indicate there are no such values. We can say x would equal 1, 4, and 8. If I were grading this, I would have no problem seeing that, but I think that this is probably what they're looking towards. Um, but I've never been a, an AP grader. So, uh, yeah, okay, let's keep going. That was page one. Then it says, B, find all real zeros or indicate that there are no such values. So they just are asking me to find the zeros. Well, I have a calculator that can do that beautifully. So we've already typed this in. I can do G solve root. And, okay, so the first one was x is equal to a negative 1.6. Notice it bounces there, so there's actually two. This is a this zero has a multiplicity of two, um, but they didn't ask that question, so I probably wouldn't add it to the equation. Um, I probably wouldn't contribute it. Okay, and then we have um, an x equals zero, and x equals one point five. I don't see any reason they wouldn't accept an answer like that. Um, okay, determine. The, so then the next question says, determine the end behavior as x increases without bound. Express your answer using mathematical notation of a limit, with, with the mathematical notation of a limit. Okay, so in this one, they're saying the limit as x increases without bound. The limit as x goes to positive infinity of g, so of g of x, would be equal to, well, what's happening? As this, we know this is an even degree polynomial, um, right? Because they gave you, well, I wrote this problem. Because it, right here, this is, its largest degree is even and its leading coefficient is positive. So in both directions, it's going to be opening up. So it might have all sorts of weird things in the middle. Um, but even without looking at our graphing calculator, we should know that it's going to go to positive infinity. So the limit, so, so we read this as the limit as x goes to infinity of g of x is equal to infinity. Okay, so many pa papers, okay. Um, find all, nope, I already did that. I'll use the closed interval, x equals negative 1.2 to 1.8 to answer the following. Determine the absolute minimum output value of g. Um, label your answer appropriately. Determine the absolute min maximum output of g. Okay, but notice what they're doing here is they're keeping me in this particular window. Um, so what I might do with my calculator is come here and do that G solve again and calculate what happens, where is a negative 1.2? Okay, so that's somewhere here. So at negative 1.2, and I might write this down either on my scratch paper or response. Let's see, determine the app. You know what, I'm gonna write this on the scratch paper. I'm gonna say that G of negative 1.2 is equal to, and I think that's uh, 0.648. Hopefully I can read that correctly. Uh, don't get old. Your eyes get worse. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm not that old, but anyway, my eyes. Okay. G solve. Y cal. Um, 1.8 is this other value. So now I'm looking at 1.8. I think that's, well, it's somewhere closer. To, uh, it's approaching getting closer to 2, so it's probably up here off the graph. If we want to know for sure, well, okay, let's just write G of 1.8 is equal to 7.803 is what that calculator just gave me. Um, I can also figure out, then I can also do G solve. Let's find the max. So my calculator is finding this point, and this is like G of, well, it's not exactly this, but point um, 6.2896. That's more decimals than I need, but anyway, is about equal to 1.57824. More decimals that I needed, but there we go. 
Okay, notice on this one, it says the absolute minimum output. Um, well, that was a maximum anyway right here, so we're not gonna use that for one. Determine the absolute maximum output. Absolute max on this interval. This value that we just found from the max on the graph is not as big as the um, 7.8 we just found right here. Okay, so I think, I'm guessing, that's a pretty educated guess, but I'm guessing that this is gonna be the answer for part one. Okay, let's keep going. Um, we also can use our calculator to G solve and find a minimum value. That one is interesting, but it's not inside the world we wanna live in right now. So remember how we're starting at one point, uh, negative 1 1.2, so that's no good. Um, and so the other one is about, so G of 0.95396, okay is about equal to a negative 4.2471. Okay, um, I have a lot of decimals. So you see what we're looking at here. Um, this, so we now we've got all the things that might be relevant. We had the, the end point here of one point, negative 1 1.2. We had this uh, local max. We had this absolute minimum. And then we had a the other end point that ended up being off the graph over here. Um, and so, well, okay, so here's another thing that might be helpful. You could come into the window and we wanted a negative uh, 1.2. So I'll make it a negative 1.3 so we could see that. We wanted to go to 1.8. So let me just make it a little bit bigger. Our maximum, um, our Y values, we just went as low as negative four. So let's go something like negative five. We wanted, we saw that we were as high as 7.8. So maybe I can look at this. Okay, I mean, so this is real close to the world that we want to, to live in. And so the absolute, so what did they say? Determine the absolute minimum output value of G. Um, that's going to be this value right here. Um, so we could say absolute minimum Y value is about negative 4.5. Two, four, seven, one, and so they want us to round to the thousands place. But if we, or a truncate, but if we go out to, if we practice going out to four decimal places, that'll take care of any, um, like if we rounded wrong. Um, then okay, so that was the absolute minimum. Determine the app. Then the other question said, what did it say? Determine the absolute maximum val output value. Okay, so notice they're saying output output. We don't care about the x's. They just are asking for the y values. Um, absolute maximum output value. Well, if you look at our calculator, when was this in this world? When was it the biggest? Well, it was the biggest up here, um, and that's at the top of our interval. And so, the where was that? Oh, oh, you know what? Did you catch my mistake earlier? This wouldn't have been I. This would have been two I, or you know, C two, or whatever you want to. Anyway, that's the maximum. Here's the maximum. Okay, so then we could say the absolute max y value maybe slash output is about no it's not about it's it, it was is 7.803 i think because our, our decimals everything kind of worked out nicely like that um, and that is the answer to that's that's free response question number one um if I'm wrong, comment below. I think I'll go ahead and do FRQ2 in its own video since I'm already a little bit of the way in. Um, but come back and find practice or pra find FRQ2 from my practice set. All right, subscribe, keep watching, share with your friends, comment below, all of the things. <laughs> Goodbye.